Hello, denizens. Well, I'm going to do it. I'm going to talk about Rings of Power Season 2, Episodes 1 and 2. There will be spoilers. From the many thumbnails by the usual suspects, it looks like ROP2 is getting no break from the shellacking Season 1 received. But I'm still your former network executive, and I will share how I perceive these shows from that perspective. A heads up, I'm not a Lord of the Rings lore master. I've read The Hobbit and LOTR multiple times, and I watch the extended editions of LOTR every Christmas. I'm also going to piss off a lot of people who want me to put the hate pedal to the metal. That doesn't mean I don't have serious criticisms. I do, but I, I, I won't be fussing over costumes and other minutiae. Have at me for every bit of lore I will have screwed up in the comments below. I look forward to it. But it's not my prime concern as the pretend executive in charge of production of this mess. So what transpired between Rings of Power Season 1 and 2? Well, lots of meetings, lots of shouting, and probably more shouting. And that's not because it wasn't good. That's because it didn't get the numbers. A good show is just a happy byproduct. You can't deposit quality in your bank account. I know you're already screaming at your digital screens, but Paul, make it good and everybody will watch it. No, that is not the way things work in TV land. Don't argue with me. Back in the day, it was put an old movie star in it. They'll watch it. Do you see any stars in this? I think everyone involved with ROP would have come to the conclusion that they are no longer entertaining the notion that they could <laughs> challenge Jackson's Lord of the Rings. The only promise I would be able to make to the higher-ups would be to pledge that season two would be better than season one and hopefully build from there. There will be no budget for brilliant script writers or directors. At this point, we need to assume there is um, absolutely zero chance of convincing anyone who abandoned the show in season one to return. If they do, it will be a pleasant surprise, but no one should be counting on it. That all sounds very dire and depressing, but we have to play the cards we were dealt. For all intents and purposes, we are just rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic. But the fact remains the show did get an audience. We have to build on that base. The mistake will be to assume that all of this base love the show, whereas many might have just committed to seeing it to the end, like finishing your chemo. It's that group you don't want to scare away. If season two is not good enough to keep them, then you're toast. What are the top things I would have to deal with? Well, number one would be Morphid Clark as Galadriel. Not only did the girl boss thing not work, Morphid was, uh, let's be charitable, not up to the task. We can't switch her out for Megan Fox. So instead, she's going to have to become part of a team that can cover for her deficiencies. No more taking down an ice troll single-handedly. The show needs to actually have stuff happen. Nothing of consequence happened in season one. The creation of endless mystery boxes that do not pay off does not count as making stuff happen. Nail down who the bad guy is and have them do bad things the protagonists can react to, improve the production values, and make the show look bigger, improve the script. No more cringy, there is a tempest in me dialogue. My recollection of Lord of the Rings was that they didn't speak in aphorisms, and it was surprisingly conversational. Only certain characters at certain moments got the Shakespearean treatment. I'll get back to that later. We are not going to be able to undo some of the egregious DEI casting, so let's just do our best, everyone. Now, on to episode one and two to see if they listened to my mythical executive in charge of production notes. 
I'm happy to report that things actually happened. If you loved season one, then season two, based on these two shows, will not disappoint you. If you're that on-the-fence group getting chemo I mentioned, I'm sorry to say nothing I've seen so far will convince you to recommit. The Orcs, led by Sam Hazeldine's excellent Adar, inexplicably kills off a version of Sauron, uh, whereby uh, Sauron turns into goo, flops about like a saltwater taffy monster, eats a woman, and then returns as Hallbrand. Re they replay the meeting of Galadriel on the raft for some reason, and then he becomes Anatar. Doesn't make a ton of sense, but it is more action than took place in the entirety of season one, which also suffered from not containing much in the way of lore, other than the fashioning of the three elven rings and the Palantir in Numenor. In the books, elves got their rings last after the dwarves and men, but <laughs> never mind. This is adjacent Tolkien, after all. Season two with Anatar brings more actual lore to bear, as clumsy as the first two shows were, if this was how season one of Rings of Power had started with Anatar as the clear antagonist, it might have had a better chance, especially because the title of the fucking show is Rings of Power, and Anatar is your Rings of Power evil dude. Make the rings, distribute the 19, and deal with their effects on the dwarves and the humans. That should have been season one. As a bonus, most of the wretched Harfoot stuff would uh, never have happened. Back to season two. Important things were dealt with in a far too perfunctory manner. Uh, when Galadriel is brought before a very grim elf king, Gilgalad, she snitches on Elrond. Ah. Harold Elrond carries three rings as a means of halting the fading and saving of our people in a pouch. <laughs> this is both too much and too little. The show assumes that everyone knows what an elf is. Network TV was good at short-form reintroductions, as many people's first experience with the show might have been the second season. ROP takes way too many things for granted. The producers need to assume no one has heard of Tolkien. You need to find a way to explain and or demonstrate to the audience that rings with power have been part of elven life for uh, thousands of years. They are ring wielders after all. Gilgalad sports a bevy of rings. Are they just fashion accessories? Was it mentioned in season one what the powers of the three rings were? What they did? It doesn't matter, as this should have been expressed again Anyway, when Círdan returns with the three rings, he already has one on. Gil-galad puts on another, and Galadriel puts on the last one. Why these three people? Did they know what power the ring they picked up enabled? What if Gil-galad wanted Kieran's ring? So far, Galadriel has been a total royal screw-up. Why did she get a ring? I found this omission bizarre, and a lost opportunity to sp expand on the elves. They still speak in a stilted way as if they have never had any personal interactions, never grew up with each other. There's no humor, wry smiles, knowing looks. I, I don't care how dire the situation is. It lacks um, huma how humanity, if I can use that word. A captured Hallbrand is brought before Adar. Adar does not recognize that Hallbrand is Sauron somehow. It was a nice exchange, but there was no real reason for Hallbrand to be captured, as he could have just rode off and headed to Celebrimbor without this detour. Still, stuff happened. Good for you. Better than nothing, I guess. Then we hit the most problematic scenes in the two shows, the mystery box wizard and the Harfoots. This was a giant fecal dump left over from the first season, and it still stinks. Don't know where they're going with this. Because we are introduced to a, a dark wizard, I can only think that 
these two are blue wizards if they are going to keep with the lore to some degree. God help us if mystery wizard is Gandalf. So the show has added yet another antagonist. Yeah, we, we, we needed that. Mystery wizard confronts evil masked wearing henchmen and sends a tornado after them that also sucks Acorn Head and the fat one into oblivion. No answers, but at least some painful, ridiculous action. Galadriel is sent off with Elrond on a mission because uh, uh, Gil-Galad doesn't trust uh, Galadriel, good for him. We are treated to the continuing sitcom between Prince Durin and Disa, which many uh, loved in season one. Back in Celeborn's Forge, Hallbrand disappears, pulls a David Copperfield, and, and he enters out of the flames as Anatar, the pretty Sauron, because that is what the greatest of all evil incarnates would, would do. Why did we need Hallbrand? Why couldn't Anatar just show up? I don't know. Anyway, I must have been in a good mood because I thought the first two shows at least were all, were an improvement on season one. I have not seen uh, episode three. It was easy to tell that they saved money on lighting or, or maybe don't get your film processed by that film kiosk in the mall parking lot. <laughs> it was so dark. But as someone who was trained in series TV, I will repeat over and over, I don't get why streaming shows forget the rules of series TV. Stop unrolling a really long movie over several days. TV shows have something called B-plots, small stories that concludes within one, an episode. Sure, have the A-plot arc over the, the whole season, but why not have, you know, Galadriel go to the salon and get a perm and the elves laugh at her? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm joking, but only half joking. Lord of the Rings was packed with fun, light moments, rings of power, still can't figure this out. Let me leave you with this final observation. The show still lacks one major component, a reason to keep watching it. Why do we love LOTR? Because we loved Frodo and Samwise and Gandalf, Aragorn, Legolas and Gimli, Elrond, Pippin and Merry, Farmer Maggot, everyone pretty much. TV is all about bringing friends into your living room. Who do we want to bring into our living room from Rings of Power? I'm just not invested in the plight of the elves. What exactly do elves do besides stand around being stately and then show up just in time to help fight a battle? Sauron is the only interesting character. Ultimately, the problem with Rings of Power is that there's no drama and we're always waiting for something to happen. No heroes to speak of. Actually, stuff happens in episode one and less so in episode two, and I'm worried that it's heading towards an endless talk fest in episode three. I'm not rooting for the good guys. I honestly don't know what's good about them. I want Sauron to wipe everyone out. I'm assuming that was not the intent of the show. Yes, there will be the curious who will check out if anything has changed. So far, I don't think enough has been done to keep them watching. I'm sure at the very beginning, the producers thought, wow, the elves are just the coolest. And in many ways they are, as a side dish, not the main course. Till next time, denizens, be seeing you. <laughs>